Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, for the last few weeks, I've had a series going on on slide rules. And what we've used mostly are these standard 10-inch slide rules and occasionally the 20-inch slide rule. Now, the interesting thing about slide rules is they're mechanical computers, and their accuracy depends on the length of the scale. As mentioned, that's a 10-inch. The other one, of course, is 20. Now, a standard 10-inch slide rule will give you an answer to about three significant digits. The 20 inch, we can get three to four significant digits. But today what I wanna talk about is something called the Fuller Calculator. This is something the channel bought me for my birthday and I wanted to do a quick video on it because I can't seem to find any instructional videos on how to use this thing on YouTube. So this may be the first. This is the Fuller Calculator. Now, this is what's called a spiral scale calculator. Now the logarithmic scale is on this outer cylinder right here, and it is 500 inches long, 25 times the size of this one. And as a result, we can get answers on this to at least five significant digits. So let's cue up the music and learn how to use the Fuller calculator. Now before we get started on the fuller, let's go ahead and just review how a normal slide rule works. What we have is we have a couple of scales here. This is the C scale and the D scale. And these are logarithmic scales. Now the slide rule works by taking two identical rulers and passing them back and forth over each other. However, we can also use calipers. So for example, right here, we're using the calipers to mark the distance that is equivalent to 1.25 then all we have to do is take that distance, bring it over to a number that we wish to multiply by 1.25, such as 2, and then we can read off our answer here, 2.5. This is the principle that the Fuller uses. Now let's have a look at the Fuller calculator itself. It kind of looks like a scroll or a rolling pin, as you can see. There's a brass pointer right here, that, that is attached to the handle, and it does not move, but there's a cylinder underneath it, as you can see, that freely moves. But once you let, let it go, it'll stay right there. We have a second brass pointer right here, and this is attached to the end cap. Now, the difference between this and the other one is this one is movable, as you can see. Now, the way that you calculate with a fuller calculator is that you put the number that you want to do something to underneath this fixed pointer. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it right here to 150. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is that we have to put one of these pointers over the index. Now the index is this 100 right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to twist the cap and pull it out a little bit so that that pointer is right over that 100. As you see, we're pointing at the index now. Now have a look down here. This scale is a spiral logarithmic scale. There are 50 turns, and each turn is 10 inches for a total of 500 inches. That is one index up here. There is a second index right here. There's 999, there's 1,000. So as long as you're on the same side, of this arm, you can use either of these indexes as convenient. Now the reason there's an index on both sides is that as you turn this, you can't get it past that little bar very easily. It doesn't always go very well. Sometimes you have to bring it around, and in that case you would use this index on this side. So now as you see, we're set up over the index. Now to do a calculation, all we have to do is leave both arms where they are. Here's the number that we're working with. Say we want to multiply 150 by 2. We'll put the 2 at the pointer of that arm. 
Let me show you. So now, as you can see, we have the two right at the tip of that pointer. Now, these are acting as the calipers did on the slide rule. So all we have to do is come right over here and read our answer, 300. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll first figure out the circumference of the Earth on a standard slide rule. Now, to calculate the circumference of the Earth, we would come out here to 2, multiply 2 by pi, 3.14, and then we would multiply that by the radius of the Earth, which is 3959, or in this case, 396. Zero. And that would give us our answer right here. There's 20,000, 24,800. And that's about the best that we'd be able to do with this. Let's see if we can do a little better with the fuller. Now with the fuller, the first step is going to be to take 2 and multiply it by 5. So we've got 2 here. We set our index to the 100 up top here. Now we're going to put pi over this point. So let's go ahead and do that. Now there's a mark for pi here that corresponds to 3.1416. And we've put it over the index. Now we're going to come down to the pointer and read off our answer. Looks like 6, 2, 8, 3, and a little bit. Now. We're going to reset the pointer up here to the index. Now, we haven't moved our pointer down here. It's still at 6283 six, something. But we have placed our index over the 1. Now, the problem is, is that as we move this around, we're going to come off scale. So if we try and put up the radius of the Earth, it'll be all the way up here but our pointer is off the scale. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use the lower pointer right here, and we're going to put this over the radius of the Earth, which is 3959 miles. Now, if you look very carefully right there, you'll see that that's 3959. And then we just read up to our answer. This is 24,800, 24,850. And notice that it is about halfway between the 7 and the 8. So it would be 24,875 miles. Now we all know that the circumference of the Earth is 24,901 miles. So why do we have a different number? Well, let's go find out. Let's go 2 times 3.1416, because we can only have five significant digits times 3959, 24,875 miles. But this is the circumference of the Earth to five significant digits, and we did it right off the slide rule. Now, another function of slide rules is the calculation of what's called logarithms. If you're not familiar with what a logarithm is, go ahead and have a look at my video. But say we want to find the logarithm of 30. Now, what we would do is we would find 3 on the D scale, and then we would look up on the L scale, right here, and read off the logarithm. So 30 would be 1.477, it looks like. It's about halfway between, between the 6 and the 8. So if we go ahead and do that on the calculator, we find that it is 1.4771225. Okay, we got 1.477. So we're pretty accurate with that, even on a 10 inch slide rule. Let's go ahead and see if we can do a little better than that with the fuller calculator. Now to calculate logarithms with a fuller calculator, what you need to do is you need to use this scale right here. Now what I've done here is I've taken the index scale and I've put it on 30 because we're looking for the logarithm of 30. You come up this brass arm and there are two digit numbers here. There's like uh, 0 0.08, 0 0.16, 0 0.34. You go up to the top line that has these upward tick marks on it. 
and you read it off. It's 0.46. And 2.46, you add the number along this scale. So we're going to have 0 0.0. 171. So that will give us a grand total of 0 0.4771. And as you can see, that's pretty good. Now that's the basic operation of a Type 1 Stanley Fuller cylindrical calculator. They take a little bit of skill to use, but they give you very accurate results, much more so than you could even get with a 20-inch slide rule. Now, this was patented in 1879, and there were 14 to 16,000 made. There's a two-digit code right up here in the top brass plate that says that mine was made in 1952. Now, with a good engineering slide rule like this picket, you can do multiplication, division, logarithms, natural logarithms, trigonometric functions, cubes, squares, and their roots. With a fuller calculator, it's kind of a three-trick pony. It's extremely precise, but it can multiply, it can divide, and it can do logarithms. And that's it. Now, the type 2 fuller and the type 3 fuller incorporated trigonometric functions. But the only one that was sold in large quantities in the United States was this Type 1. And while I'm at it, I want to thank Fight the Flat Earth for taking a moment to receive this for me and then send it on to me as the seller would not ship internationally. It's a fascinating piece of mathematical history, and it's an interesting way of looking at a slide rule. Now, one thing that I didn't discuss in this video is how to do division. Division is simply the reverse of multiplication. You're subtracting instead of adding. If there's some question about that or some interest, I'll go ahead and do another video on this and we'll include division as well. So I hope you found this helpful and people that are interested in learning how to use a fuller computer now have a little bit of a tutorial on at least the basics of it. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for your support of this channel, including buying this fuller calculator for me for my birthday. Take care, folks.